Welcome to GardenWise Adventures. My name is Malie and today we're going to do another indoor gardening series. Now today we are going to talk a little bit about lights, racks, and timers for the lights. Now I did a video about lights for my beginning gardener series, but this is going to be a little bit different because the lights that you're going to need for indoor gardening are going to be a little bit different than if you're just starting seeds. So let's look at my grow room and talk a little bit about the lights that I have and what I think is important if you want to actually produce things like tomatoes and peppers and greens indoors. Now just so that you can understand why lights are important, let me talk to you a little bit about how I started with indoor gardening. And I've talked about it before, but the first place I started gardening was on this plant rack. And I had it in front of a west facing window. It wasn't a very strong window and I was able to start seeds, but they didn't do very well because I was lacking light. Now, seedlings need light, but they don't need as much light as grown plants need. For example, up here, I have my succulents, which need a lot of light. They need light to be almost as strong as sunlight. I've got some little tomatoes in here. This is for a tomato growing experiment that I'm doing that's comparing hydroponically grown tomatoes with uh, tomatoes grown in pots. But the tomatoes need a lot of light. So we have them here under the strongest grow light on this hydroponic unit. This is my Devo unit. And I'll link a video up above that talks a little bit about that experiment. Then there's things like my citrus trees. I have a lemon tree and a satsuma mandarin. We're starting to get fruit on the satsuma mandarin and also on the lemon tree. But these need a ton of light to be able to, to fruit and to produce. So if you're wanting to get started growing indoors, the first thing that you're going to need to think about is how much can you afford to spend on lights? Because if you want to get good grow lights, you are going to have to spend some money. Now there's a lot of lights out there. There are some that are extremely expensive and there are some that are not as expensive. Now I'm going to show you some of the lights that I've purchased and go over the pros and cons of each of those lights. Now, when I first got started, the lights that I had were very cheap. They weren't very strong, but they worked really well for starting seeds and for growing greens. And then as I wanted to start producing tomatoes and peppers and stuff like that, I moved up in lights. Right now, I just have mostly kind of mid-range lights in cost. They're not that expensive. I have not moved up to the stronger lights, but eventually I think I might want to because it would actually help boost my production, especially on the tomatoes and the peppers. Although I have been getting good production on tomatoes and peppers. You know, as people get into hobbies, you, you, you end up wanting to get better stuff. But let me show you what's been working for me and talk to you a little bit about how much it's been costing and you know, whether or not I think they're worth it. Now, some of the first lights that I got were these Fer Fairy Morris lights. They're off right now so that I don't get weird shadows in my, in my video. But these have been strong enough to be able to grow my succulents. But as you can see, they're very, very close to the succulents. These are not the strongest lights. These would not help my tomatoes produce and they would not help peppers produce. So when I decided to move up, I moved up to these lights. Now the, the images that I'm showing you now that show the cost, those were two years ago. I did not go online today and look at the costs. But these were a little more expensive. These may not be available, but they were just generic plant lights that I found on Amazon. And they were some of the cheaper ones that I could find. And they work really, really well, especially if you can get them close for starting seeds and for growing lettuce. But these again, once again, are not strong enough for the tomatoes. They, were, they did not help my tomatoes and peppers produce. So I decided I needed to move up talked to a lot of people, did a lot of research, and these are mid-range and they're not actually grow lights. These are Home Depot shop lights. They're the Honeywell 5000 Kelvin, 5000 Lumen shop lights. And these have produced tomatoes and peppers for me and have worked really quite well. But they were not strong enough for my citrus trees. So I had to move on to something different. These grow lights in the back are Sansei grow lights. I have three of them because we need a lot of lights. This is another type of Sansei grow light that is actually adjustable. You can 
move the lights around and point them where you need them. And these have been strong enough, as you can see, to help my citrus plants stay healthy and also flower and fruit. Now there's a lot of terms that you can learn about when researching grow lights, and I can't go over all of them, so I'll quickly summarize what I do know, which isn't really a lot. And then I'll add some articles down below that go over the basics. Now the first article covers spectrum, which is the effect of certain colors or visible and non-visible wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation on plants. Now I know that's a big term, but that's measured in PAR, which is photosynthetic active radiation, which is another big word. And it also covers how to read a spectrum chart. Now all of that is a lot to learn. The article covers it really well, and you don't really need to know all of it to be able to purchase a good grow light. So like I said, I'll link that article below. But it also colors co color temperature, which is measured in Kelvin, and that is how warm or cool lights affect plants. The next article talks about how LED lights are put together and how they work in relation to spectrum and color. Now I know all of this sounds really overwhelming, but you really only need to know the bare basics to purchase a good grow light. So like I said, I'll link those articles below. When we're talking about lights and how strong they are, another thing you need to think about is the racks that you use. Now, if you're using lights that are not as strong as some of the other lights, you do need to use racks that will get your lights close enough to the plants. So when you're looking into purchasing lights, look at lights that can attach to chain, chains that can raise or lower, or you can do what I did. I bought these Baker's racks these off Amazon. I absolutely love these, and you can set the shelf height the way you want it. So I have several shelf heights that are shorter, and those are for my seed starting, and I have several that are taller to accommodate larger plants. Now, if you're going to be producing tomatoes indoors and peppers indoors, you need to take into account the height of those plants. I like to grow some of the dwarf tomatoes that get three feet tall, so I have taller racks. I also like to grow salad greens that take a little bit shorter racks. You know, my seedlings take even shorter racks. So I've set different size racks based on what I would like to grow. Now you can use any type of racks that you want. I'll show you a picture of what I did for my lights when I was first starting. I actually use the table that I'm sitting at right now and I built myself a PVC stand where I could raise and lower the lights over the seedlings. And that worked really well, especially for just seed starting. Arrow Garden right now, I just noticed for the first time, has a plant light and it was actually on sale for something like 50 some odd dollars. I'll see if I can find the link to that. That was for the Black Friday sale. I don't know how much it costs normally. But there are many different ways that you can make sure your lights are at the proper height over your plants. Now when purchasing racks, you need to think about what your purpose is. Like I talked about, you need to be able to have different heights to accommodate different heights of plants a way to be able to hook lights onto them so that you can raise and lower the lights. And you also need to be able to think about airflow. Now, if you wanted to use something like a bookshelf that's stationary, you know, make sure you're not trying to grow plants that are too tall for that. Make sure there's a way to attach the lights to it and make sure there's that the sides are not so enclosed that you don't get good airflow around them. Now, the next video that I'm gonna do is gonna talk a little bit about fans, and fans are really important for that airflow, but so is the type of rack that you use. Now, the last thing that I wanted to talk about is how long should your lights be on? Now, lights should be on a cycle, especially for tomatoes and peppers, about 16 hours. I have mine on 14 hours right now, but I think I'm gonna bump that up to 16 hours here shortly. The 14 hours has been just fine for my seeds starting, but we're gonna start producing plants in here. Now you can set an alarm on your phone, you know, so that you can remember to go in and turn on and off your lights every day, or you can get automatic timers. And let me show you the timers that I like. First, let's say hi to Gigi. He is such a cute boy. I love that cat. But let me show you the, the uh, timers that I have. So this is a power strip and it is and it's got a timer on it. So this side where everything is plugged in is the timed side. This side over here is, is not timed. So if you have something that should not be on a timer, like a heat mat, you can plug it into this side. But I have all of my lights and my fan uh, plugged into here. 
it goes on at a certain time and off at a certain time. So this is these uh, power strips have been amazing. I really actually have really liked that I have those. So that's all that I can think of right now when it comes to lights, timers, and racks. And I would love to hear if I've missed anything. I would love to hear your favorite lights. You know, are there lights that are on your wish list? Are there lights that you have used that have helped produce better than other lights for better cost? I would just love to hear that. And I would love to hear the type of racks that you use. So hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If it has been helpful, I hope you like, subscribe, share it with your friends, and go have a wonderful garden adventure.